ओम विश्व दर्पण दृश्यमान नगरी तुल्यन्यांतर्गत पश्यन्नात्म मयया बहिर्भूत यथा निद्रया यक्षाते प्रबोध समय स्वात्मेवाय तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त बीजस्यांतरिवाकुरो जगदीद प्राकन माया कलकालकलना वैचिचित्रीक मयावीव विजृंभयतम योगी वयस्वेच्छया तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त तस्म श्रीगुरमूर्त नम श्रीदक्षिणाूर्त ओं सहना सहनो भुन सह वीकवाह तेजस्वीनावधी तमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओं शाति 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 सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ स्वाभूतिरसाशादृश्यशब्दापेक्षि निर्विकल्प सीवातस्थितीपवत सो दृश्यशब्दापेक्षि और दृश्यशब्दापेक्ष सो दट इज रीडिंग एनीवे so in this verses beginning from 22nd verse the author is de- dealing with this topic of nididhyasanam in the form of a samadhi abhyasa and so he introduces six types of a samadhi three internal three external <coughs> in the three internal two savikalpa one nirkalpa three external also two savikalpa one nir so having introduced the six samadhis then author started explaining from verse 24 first he described antar drishya uh, so uh, um, anuvidh savikalpa samadhi in verse 24 then uh, in verse 25 antar shabd anuvidh so uh, savikalpa samadhi so uh, we know that now antara internal drashya drashya means what thought antar what is drashya mean inside thought mind but a thought so anuvidh associated savikalpa samadhi so this this samadhi is well with a prop of a thought focus on thought from thought goes to the sakshi that's the what it is so this is what it is and then shabda anuvidya once you come to sakshi then various features of the sakshi described by various words in shastra shabda anuvidya so this is how and then well definitely a nirvikalpaka will automatically happen we will be discussing and so in this now verse 24 and 25 we have already seen so both savikalpaka samadhi internal savikalpaka samadhi in form of drashya anuvidya associated with the thought and shabda anuvidya associated with the various features of that sakshi consciousness witness consciousness and features are described in words so words related anyway in this verse 26 now antara nirvikalpaka samadhi is described so since meditation is connected with the internal condition of the mind in the first stage well the meditator this is a these are steps actually really speaking even though we say six but here three are internal meditation basically are um, they are in steps first you should just take when internal meditation means what well internal there is something going on there is something which is all the time experienced there is something which is all the time lighted illumined okay so take that help 
of that what is lighted, what is experienced inside, that is thought. And uh, then who is the illuminator? Oh, I the witness is an illuminator. I the witness consciousness is an illuminator. So this is say first step. And now so you have come to witness consciousness in the first step. Now witness consciousness has been said as asangaha etc. So many words, purnaha. So well now focus, keeping focus on witness consciousness, now various meditations, uh, I mean various features of witness consciousness have been meditated. Second step. And if that continues for some time, results into nirvikal. We will be seeing what is that. So, uh, so what Drishyam refers to the thoughts in the first stage. Because thoughts are objects of experience. Drishyam here means what is seen, but here it is what is experienced. Not seen means we, we not with this. If it is something is seen with the eyes, it is not antara. Naturally, it is external. So here, antara drishya means definitely thoughts. What is experience? So thoughts are illumined by the consciousness principle, which is called druk. The Chaitanyam and thereafter he appreciates the fact that every thought is experienced because of Chaitanyam. Exactly, if you feel some difficulty in understanding this and meditating upon, take again example of light. As the light pervades my body, so I, I become Drishyam by the light. Light is illuminated, I am illumined. Same if the entire thought is basically experienced by you with the nuances. Yeah, <laughs> even they thought of anger, but in that also, you know, huh, it is, I mean, there is an intensity, there is a less intensity, this, etc, etc. So as whole thought is illumined, therefore it must be, if my whole body is illumined by the light, means the light has totally pervaded my body. Same with the whole thought is experienced by you, means the consciousness has pervaded entire thought. That's how we have to... So he, this meditator appreciates the fact that every thought is experienced because of the consciousness spread over the thought. Just as every ob object is experienced outside because the light spreads over the object. So you have to take help in case if you feel little difficulty. Anyway, and the thought by itself is not experienceable because the thought is inert by itself. Somebody may say, thought is experienced by itself, about thus. That's how thought is Atma for them, Kshanikam. Atma is Kshanikam. Because thought is conscious. And therefore, well, thought is experienced by itself. Because thought is thought is itself uh, a conscious entity. What is conscious is self-revealing, self-illumining. And therefore, it is experienced by itself. No, 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 sir. This is Vedanta. And therefore, thought is inert. How thought is inert? Because it pertains to mind. How mind is inert? Well, mind is <laughs> made of a subtle element. So in case, I don't think you will have that difficulty, but in case if you find difficulty, then do this way. And then this inert vritti basically is appearing sentient also and experienceable because of the consciousness. Such witness conscious. So the consciousness is not physically separable from the thought. Attention should be shifted from the thought part to the consciousness part. Like here also. Like right now, you appreciate the light as illuminator, my body is illumined. But you cannot separate physically light from my body. No. Your focus should go from my body to the to the light. That's it. Same way here also, my focus should go to the consciousness. So, and then thereby you will understand that this consciousness well is understood as an independent entity naturally so it is called sakshi chaitanya it's independent like light is independent light is not dependent upon the body <laughs> so if i go away the light will also will automatically that is that is there but anyway here here light is also light also by sensor it goes away but my point is so far as the illumined object is there so, what is illumined? Uh, illuminator is not dependent upon illumined that we can understand. So, basically, that an example there may be a little limitation. But here, consciousness is an independent entity. It's called Sakshi Chaitanyam. So, when, when I take a, I'm, uh, a thought and appreciate the consciousness as Sakshi Chaitanyam, then I am in the first Samadhi. Drashya Anubhita, associated with the thought. Thought connected 
consciousness meditation sat witness consciousness meditation so illuminator of the thought and then so this shifting of a attention is this samadhi number 1 then after focusing on sakshi the second samadhi shabdanuvid is dwelling on the nature of the sakshi the features or characteristics of the sakshi chaitanyam such as sangam sachidananda etc etc so many are there we know shuddham etc are focused upon aprameyam yeah that is also all you can choose the words from verse number 12 to 25 of bhagavad gita in chapter 2 you can choose sthanu kuta sah nitya aprameya achala etc etc so many are there free from birth and death ajo nitya shashvat so anyway the features or characteristic of the sakshi chaitanyam well you can choose so again now you know now you are a witness consciousness but well more features of witness consciousness i have been focused upon that's a second step and it is very important to not objectify this sakshi but to say the illumining consciousness is i am first you go to thought from thought to the i am the illuminator well and the, so i the witness consciousness and then for the features so then only it becomes a aparoksha right otherwise well oh, sakshi illumines and you are trying to objectify the sakshi <laughs> then uh, this is not a nidhyasana <clears throat> so sakshi should be replaced immediately by aham in the very first step itself i am the illuminator of the thoughts thoughts are i when depart i do not thoughts are divided i am not we have seen all these things thoughts are confined to the mind i am not confined to the mind alone i am the sakshi behind all the minds as bhagwan said in bhagavad gita that may you know me as the knower in all this all the all the in all the bodies kshetragnam chapi mam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bhagwan said in all the bodies i am the very sakshi not the knower please understand ha uh, knower is ahankara you know where is you bring in knower there is a mind ha uh, people ask this question i have answered already to you before sai ji if i am the knower in all of all the minds then definitely what is what is going on in someone's mind i should know but i don't know and therefore i am not the knower in all the minds hey, you are knower pertaining to one particular mind because knower means it's knower means ahankara hmm pramata so then whatever occurs in that mind as idam vritti this is aham vritti that only you will know but you are very witness of all the minds you are witness of all the knowers in you all the knowers sustain all the known sustain all the knowledge sustain you are the sakshi which is distinct from pramata pramanam prameyam because this question one person was very serious he said swami ji i don't uh, trust this uh, upanishad there it you have said you are the knower of all the minds ultimately he i said no and if you say if you want to say i am the knower of the mind mind is known fine but understand you are witness consciousness ha uh, knower means if you take again as a just a ahankara like uh, right now i am a knower of all of you like that well uh, if you want to take it no that's not correct aham vritti idam vritti both arise in the mind only so if you take yourself as a knower you are witness of all the knowers ahankara witness of the sak ahankara itself so you one should understand ultimately conscious mind has this pravritti dravyam sha vrittiyam sha we have discussed today somehow it comes to my mind dravya dravyam sha vrittiyam sha dravyam sha remains inside called ahankara vritti amsha goes out associate dissociate contract expand sun well like a sun dravyam amsha its its um, rays are called vritti amsha 
That's a Vrityamsha which goes to the world and illumines the world. So, well, sun, sun illumines the world, but sun, so basically sun as a Dravyamsha remains there. Like a torch. I have given that example also. Torch. Torch is in your hand. That is a Dravyamsha. So one beam goes out and illumines the object. Everything has, every illuminator well has this two amsha. Here, in terms of mind we are saying. So, Vrityamsha, Dravyamsha. Dravyamsha remains inside. Hmm. Swamiji, his mind has gone to India. If, what are you talking? Mind means Sukshma Sharira. If Sukshma Sharira goes out of this mind, then how is he alive now? So, you should understand very well. His mind means that Vrityamsha has gone. That is how we have a prakriya called Vritti Vyapti and Phala Vyapti. Ah, that's epistemology in Vedanta. We, we, every, every philosophy has its own way of un- making you understand how knowledge arises. So we have this prakriya. Vritti Vyapti. Pervaded by the Vritti. Vritti Amsha of the mind. And then Chidavasa being there, definitely. <laughs> if the whole mind has become conscious, Dravyamsha itself has become conscious because of the manifestation of consciousness. Then definitely the thought <laughs> will have a consciousness, reflected consciousness. And so that will illumine the object. So Vritti pervades the object and the Chidavasa which is there in the Vritti illumines the object. That's how we call, now this is called Jnanam, Vritti Jnanam, cognitions. These are the cognitions, perceptions, cognitions. So this is how knowledge takes place. Anyway, so basically, Sakshi, I am a Sakshi, witness consciousness, witnessing, well, basically, compare, that's how we, instead of Brahman, we are using this Sakshi. You are Sakshi of this Antakkarana. But ultimately, you are, that is Brahman. You should understand the consciousness has no dimension. The witness consciousness has a dimension. Somebody says, okay, what is the dimension? Oh, it is, it is, it is circle. So it is not Sakshi. It is an object of a Sakshi. Okay. Now, if you say Sakshi is, is a, has a particular shape, it is no more a Sakshi. It is an object of a Sakshi. Sakshi. (laughs) So Sakshi has no dimension and therefore it is Brahman and therefore all the minds are non-separate from all the knowers basically and all the known, and all the knowledge, all the cognitions, basically. I am a witness consciousness of all that. And basically, I illumine. I illumine the no. People think I illumine the mind. Are you illumine knower. Very knower resolves and knower arises, you know. Please understand this. So, may not, you may not, should not have this kind of a confusion. And uh, of course, you arrive at uh, through ultimately in Dhridrisha Viveka also, we can do that. I am a knower and all these thoughts, etc. And the external world is known and etc. etc. But then knower also, you should go further. Knower is by nature knowledge, consciousness. And thereby you can arrive. That is also you can do. Or else all the thoughts, aham vritti, idam vritti, whatever the thoughts are there, I am witness. So, I am a witness consciousness of all the Pramatas, Pramanam and Prameya. You can say that later. First is, I am a witness consciousness of all the thoughts. That is pertaining to one mind only. And then, well, further when you, when you see into the features of this witness consciousness, well, this is Asangam, Purnaha, Sachidananda, then you can say, well, I am witness consciousness that is Brahman. It's a basically limitless consciousness. Witness pertaining to the one mind, but ultimately it is just consciousness. Hmm. Difference between witness consciousness and consciousness is this. Not in really speaking, there is a, there are two different entities. Witness, because this consciousness which, which illumines one particular mind, ahankara and uh, even um, other thoughts also. All are illumined by this consciousness we call witness consciousness. But ultimately that is Brahman. <clears throat> so anyway, Drashyanu Vidya, Shabdhanu Vidya. So, 
and then well that this sakshi well you can once you say i am illuminator of thoughts thoughts are i even depart i do not thoughts are divided i am not thoughts are confined to the mind i am not confined to the mind i am the sakshi behind all the minds and as i said you sarvakshetreshu kshetra here is a object of knowledge and that is all mind so sarvakshetreshu i am the witness consciousness of all the minds you can say later or I am the consciousness in which all the minds, bodies, everything are sustained, are non-separate. Anyway, so this is Shabda Anuvidya Savikalpa Samadhi. So in the first two stages, when I am invoking the witness consciousness, claiming myself to be witness consciousness and dwelling upon my real nature, my will and attempt are, are involved. Still Ahankara is there. Will is involved means hankara is there. Because you, you, you call, recall from your teaching. Let me start thinking about I am Asanga. Let me start thinking I am Satchidananda. Let me start thinking I am Purna. There is a free will. Free will. Before that, Drashya, Drashya Anuvidya. Let me focus on the thoughts. Oh, then who is the illuminator of thought? I am the witness conscious of who is the illuminator of the thought. So there, this is Savikalpak Samadhi. In which your free will is there, ahankara is there, free will means ahankara, that's it. So, that is there. So, meditator is active yet, ahankara is active. The active ahankara is the subject and subject-object division is present. What's the object right now? I mean, so-called object is witness consciousness. That object means not thinking as an ob object. But you are meditator and meditating yourself as a witness consciousness. In that way, object of meditation is witness consciousness, I'm saying. That way. Don't think that um, so we have to objectify witness consciousness. But so this is how ahankara is present and this ahankara, the meditator is present and meditator definitely is carefully and with a free, with, a, with his will, he meditates on, on illuminator of the thoughts or meditator meditates on the various aspects of the witness consciousness. So subject object division is as though present, prominent. And this is required because the thought does not naturally happen, but my will and effort are required. Then author says, well, when the meditator has deliberately entertained a thought for some time, well, then a, a momentum is caused and the mind registers the thought. Mind has a capacity to register the thought. The thought which is entertained for a length of time is automatically registered in the mind. Several examples are there. Several. You ask me the meaning of a particular word, suppose. And uh, I think, I, 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 I try to recollect. For a length of time, I, and we were talking. But then you, you came to know, Swami doesn't know. But anyway, so you change the topic. And then, uh, but my mind has initially deliberated for some time to get the meaning. I try to recollect it, but I did not get. Then we change the topic. We are talking something else. Suddenly, that meaning <laughs> props up. <laughs> How? Because, because of my deliberation for some time, well, mind has registered that thing. And so uh, still that thought is there. Now we are talking something else. So in a conscious mind, the sthula vrutti, well, we are discussing that topic, whatever. But in, in the form of a sukshma vrutti, it has continued and, and brought the meaning. <laughs> so it happens. Like, I will tell you one more thing. They give a very nice example is that, you know, initially you paddle uh, the bicycle. Free will, right? You paddle, put effort, will and effort. In what? Afterwards, well, you stop. There is no will, there is no effort. Still, the, it continues for some time. <laughs> the bicycle runs for some time. It gains momentum. Where moment, to gain a momentum, will and effort is required. Once it comes into momentum, then will and effort is suspended. Understand this. Then still it runs. So initially in Savikalpa Samadhi, there is a will and effort, both. A ah, lot of effort. Sometimes person gets up also. Oh, 
I am I have heard so many times I am asangah but it doesn't come to me. So you bring teaching and these and that you listen again and all will and effort. Please understand Nirvikal Samadhi we have to understand very well. So basically mind has basically registers the thought. You know, the other example I will give you. And uh, suppose uh, in, 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 this is for me actually. So you, I am invited for some function and you know then you have to sit on the dais and there are six, seven people sitting on a dais. And uh, so all seven invitees. And um, well, and one person did not come. So his chair is empty. But I did not pay attention. My attention is on the audience and what I am going to talk. I am one very much conscious of that, what I have to talk. So my whole mind is preoccupied with that. And our audience. Oh, there, are, there is less audience and this and that. People may not like this topic or what or this and that. And all these things. So, but during uh, in that um, function, well, my I just pay. I mean, I I turn my face like that, with thinking something else. But I turn my face this side, and mind has registered a empty chair. Not consciously, just registered. After whole function is over, and uh, I went out, and then somebody said, "Somebody, so and so person has um, uh, not come. Do you know that?" I said, "Yes." But I, in conscious mind, there was not, I have never thought that so-and-so person is not there except. It's a, a casual, uh, you know, I was looking in the on the dais and mind has registered that thought. So I'm able to answer, yes. I, if in a conscious mind, I have not thought that who has not come, let me see, huh, that chair is empty, nothing of that sort. Still, I say yes, so-and-so has not come. So there are various examples. That to understand, well, the mind has a capacity to register the thought. The mind then dwells on the thought by itself. And the best example which I have experienced several times is a Shivaratri. Ah, initially, in those days. But Shivaratri, I used to do Om Namah Shivaya for a length of time. And then I go out. Because I, I have, you have to eat. So you go out and eat. Go out, not in restaurant. You go to the dining hall and eat. Now, after one hour or so, you have entertained that thought deliberately. Will effort. Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva, Om Namah Shiva. Then you go. And now in your conscious mind, and the, the path to the dining hall and the dining hall, and that is the conscious mind. That is a sthula vritti. But in the back of the mind, Om Namah Shiva continues. The moment you, uh, when you, we are not engaged externally, that Om Namah Shiva comes back to the even conscious mind also. That shows what you entertain with the will and effort will be registered in the mind, will continue in the mind as a subtle thought. As a subtle thought, it continues. Anyway, so this capacity of the subconscious mind ultimately to stay or continue with the thought without requiring will and effort is called sukshma vritti anuvritti. You can say so that sukshma. Now it is in the form of sukshma vritti that continues anuvritti. Anu means paschat means that continues where you don't will that such and such thought should be there. You don't put any effort that such and such thought should be there. But it continues. Anyway, many of our problems also continue like this in our subconscious mind all the time. In parallel with the conscious activity in the mind. We know very well this thing is the intimate experience of everyone. Okay? So this is the intimate experience of everyone. So many problems are there. We have entertained a thought pertaining to that problem. And now we are moving out, we have gone out and now in a conscious mind those activity related thoughts are there. But that uh, problem in a subtle form continues. And as you become free, that props up again. From subconscious to the subconscious. That is the thing. It, it comes back. And then 
then again you become active in a conscious mind now the activity related thoughts world related thoughts whatever then again that is pushed back into subconscious that is a subtle thought goes on so this capacity of the subconscious mind is made use to our advantage in this meditation involving akhanda karmati i am brahman etc first savikalpa should be there this this won't come immediately you have to entertain shabdanu vidya drishyanu vidya both we have to entertain that and never never ne- please leave that thought right now that this is difficult job it is not difficult please understand me i am not pushing the idea understand me very well where the word samadhi comes means immediately our mind gets blocked that's how i have given you several example that the mind has a capacity to uh, to register the thought and to continue the thought without will effort without ahankara etc it is there and so let us take an advantage of uh, nirvikalpa samadhi also if this is we will we'll see that little difference between yogic nirvikalpa samadhi and avar nirvikalpa samadhi but anyway right now we'll go ahead so this this capacity of the subconscious mind is made use of to our advantage in this meditation involving the khanda karti so when the subconscious mind takes over the meditation well ahankara is not now required will effort is not there it becomes less prominent so vritti will definitely uh, continue as exactly as in a deep sleep state now i am comparing with deep sleep state samadhi and difference also i will tell you so when the vritti continues in the subconscious mind the this triputi oh i am a meditator sakshi is the object of meditation and this is a, oh these are the thoughts pertaining to the sakshi that is going on in my right now no that triputi is absent meditator object of meditation meditation related thoughts are there etc all this triputi goes away so subject object division is not prominent now in deep sleep state this agnana vritti in the form of well i am in a blank condition i don't experience anything is present so but ahankara is not prominent therefore subject object division also is not present in deep sleep state in nirvikalp samadhi also as in deep sleep the subconscious uh, thought continues without triputi initially triputi yeah oh my mind is able to think yeah i am a sangha etc my mind is able to think yeah i am a, i am a meditator object of meditation is a sakshi sakshi is a sangha i am a sangha etc mind entertains that you are aware of everything this is a savikalpaka drishyanu vidya san then shabdan vidya but if you entertain like this then that is that nididhyasanam that nididhyasanam turns into absorption samadhi I mean which now you are not even aware but in your mind it continues so this is how as in deep sleep state the subconscious thought also continues without triputi in deep sleep state the subconscious thought is agnana vritti in the nirvikalp samadhi the thought is gnana vritti hmm. what is gnana vritti sam what is that i am brahman i, I am a sangha i am witness consciousness which is a sangha etc that continues there's a gnana vritti so anyway so this is a difference both have i am in subtle vritti sukshma vritti in deep sleep state and in samadhi but one is agnana vritti and one is gnana vritti before that savikal samadhi is essential one cannot get absorbed into anything without entertaining thoughts pertaining to that thing you initially when you draw a painting when you read when you do this rangoli you entertain thoughts but slowly 
even you forget that you are doing that painting you are reading you are a reader itself is forgotten samajh how do i know i am reader is forgotten if you are not aware of time even the place you should understand this very ahankara the reader is resolved resolved into what resolved into object of reading people are people are resolved painter doesn't know that he's painting on the top of the mountain somebody has to tell and come or come and tell that look back it's a cliff you know goes painter goes head some natural he was he's painting something initially entertaining the thought in which i am a painter this is object of painting painting related thoughts you are all aware of totally subject object division division but if you continue for some time then the subject resolves into object subject object division goes away basically only your mind is pervaded by object of meditation or pervaded by object of painting object of reading so mind has a capacity to get absorbed into uh, the thoughts or the object of the thought which you which have you have entertained And therefore this is the advantage that is called nirvikalpa where you are not aware of oh samaji then nirvikalpa ka means so subject object have become one one subject object have become he is a painter and that is a object of painting that's a canvas how can they become one i am seeing they are two i am seeing the person is not aware the painter is not aware of subject object division please understand this ha ah, painter is not aware of subject object division reader is not aware of that i am a different i am a reader and that is the book which i am reading that kind of a division subject object division in a pers- from the person's awareness goes away please understand this very well therefore samadhi i am trying to trying to make you understand that this word don't may you not have a you know a hatred of samadhi mind's own capacity the people who come who do nididhyasanam for a length of time goes to this state the nididhyasanam itself becomes samadhi that's how in sixth chapter word samadhi is used by baba and our other acharyas also here dridushya viveka is a purely vedanta grantha but samadhi so we feel yogic samadhi has been talked no no that's not the case samadhi is a word you, you can gross translation is nididhyasanam in fact the your nididhyasanam contemplation culminates into absorption that's the thing so means that stage has not come don't worry why do you worry about that do nididhyasanam this is not for samadhi you will not have to put efforts samadhi is a culmination i'm saying but then well will effort will effort then it is not nirvikalpaka savikalpak samadhi well that is nirvidhyasa drishyanu vid shabdanu vid could you follow now drishyanu vid shabdanu vid i am witness consciousness i am asanga i am this is nirvidhyasa that culminates into nirvikalpaka because of the mind's capacity to register the thoughts which you have entertained for a length of time in nididhyasanam which we call savikalpaka samadhi so nirvikalpaka samadhi is a just a its outcome due to mind's own capacity to get absorbed or to register in form of a subtle thought you can say and the example is this deep sleep state in deep sleep state thoughts are there pow 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 do we will talk why right? so ah no thoughts thoughts are there 
thoughts are there. Sthula vritti is not there. Sukshu vritti is there. Why, why Sukshu vritti? I will talk to you. When the inclination for this swell, continuation for this akhanda, karvutti, etc. Here, when self-awareness take possession of the mind, then means when the mind is in the grip of Vedantic thoughts, mind does not require basically uh, now assistance of the thought. Mind does not require assistance of the Vedantic words also. So, previously the thought was made use to come to this consciousness that is called the Shanavidda. And then Vedantic words were used to focus on the Sakshi, to look into various features of the Sakshi, that is called Shabdanavidya. And then, well, if you continue like that, in the form of the Sakhanda Karvati, I witness consciousness, which is free from any division, which is thoughts have a division, I don't have any division, names and forms have a division, I am indivisible, we have seen that. So without the subject of the division, that will now continue. Such a condition is called Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Vikalpa means division in the form of this pramanam, prameya, pramata, subject, object, etc. Nirvikalpa means this divisionless state of the mind in which a mind has resolved. Conscious mind is called ahankara. That's it. That's it. Conscious mind is ahankara. And then definitely the vritti, the object vritti also will be there. Ahankara, aham vritti. That's a mind, is mind's activity. To generate aham vritti is a um, definitely is a function of the mind. How do you say function of the mind? That is what Tattvabodha said. Huh? Ahankara, Chittam, Manaha, Buddhi. Hmm. To generate I thought. But then you said conscious mind. Definitely. If mind is active, then mind must be conscious. So conscious mind. Called Dravyamsha. That is very much there. So Aham Vritti well definitely remains here. Then, then the Vritti Amsha goes out, pervade the object in the form of Idam Vritti. One mind, the function of the mind in form of Aham Vritti, Idam Vritti, etc. So anyway, this division has gone. Ahankara has resolved. If Aham Vritti also goes away, in deep sleep state it goes away, subject object division goes away. Here it resolves, absorbs into object of meditation. That's it. Pramata resolves into Pramaya. Your mind is totally pervaded by just this Sakshi called Akhanda Karvat. Nothing else. Even I am a meditator. Oh, and I am right now, yes. I am meditating upon Sakshi. And yeah, I am able to see. Yes, I am Sakshi. That consciousness is not there. Huh? Please understand this. Even that consciousness also is not there. It is all Savikalpaka. Nirvikalpaka means just your mind is totally pervaded by this because of a registration. So I am not aware of that. I am entertaining such a vritti. So thought continues without my being aware of it. This undistracted thought flow is compared to flame of a light. That's how here it says um, Nivata Sthita Deepavat uh, so, yeah, Well, it is compared to a flame of light which is kept in a enclosure which is not affected by the wind. Yatha Deepo Nivata Stha Nengate Naingate Nakampate so, Upama Smita, this is Upama. Upama, this is a simile given like the um, flame of light which is which is not non-flickering. Same way, this thought, undistracted thought flow is like this. That's how even yoga, yogic people also have a very beautiful state. First is a focusing. Pratyavaya Dharana. Dharana is focusing. You try to hold object of meditation. Try to hold. Again goes back. Goes to some other direction. Again you bring it. You try to entertain. Try to entertain that thought. And dhyanam. You try to retain that thought. And samadhi. That's what it is. Dharana, dhyana, samadhi. That is also. 
But we, we, our, our meditation is through this, through, through Niridhyasana. Savikalpaka, Drashanavidda, Shabdhanavidda, etc. Some advertisement props up here. Anyway, so such a flame does not flicker. Similarly, the mind in Nivital Samadhi remains in an undistracted thought flow. <clears throat> Vidyaranya also, Bhagavan talks in 6th chapter. Vidyaranya talks of uh, this Samadhi, Nirukra Samadhi, in the 1st chapter of Panchadashi. So go back and see there. Okay. Vidyaranya there adds a note. We have to see that. In, that in Nirvakalpa Samadhi, the meditator is not aware that he is entertaining this thought that I am Brahman, etc. Vritti. To, to entertain means there is Dhyanam in yogic people. Or in our case, it is Savikalpa Samadhi. But Without you entertain, still I am Brahman will, that thought continues, undistracted, without your will, effort, etc. Well, then you are exactly like in a deep sleep state. In a, in a deep sleep state, it is a blank. So, but then Vidyarinya raises this question, uh, that how... How does one know that the Vritti was present or not in Nirvikal Samadhi? Suppose Vritti is present, Swamiji. If Vritti is present, then it, we should not call it as a uh, Nirvikal Samadhi. So, why it cannot be said that the Nirvikal Samadhi is a thought-free state? That's how they say. Nirvikal means no thought. Thought means aham Vritti, dam Vritti. That is only... So, Nirvikal no division... So subject object both should not be there. Subject or both should not be there. And subject related thought aham vritti, object related thought idam vritti should not be there. Means Nirukal Samadhi means thoughtless state. Vidyarni ask a question whether the thought is there or not in Nirukal uh, Samadhi. Hey, in a deep sleep state, it is not a Nirvikal Paka. It is there is no thought free. There is no thought free in a deep sleep. What are you talking? Deep sleep is thought free. No. If that is not thought free, then why samadhi should be thought free? First answer is there is no thought free state. Even assuming the samadhi state is thought free, it is a useless state of mind because there is no knowledge. Thought free state of a mind is not valued in Vedanta. So this Nirvikalpa samadhi that Vedantin talks about is a akhandakara vritti anuvritti. Unflickering. That's how I said, this is better to say. The very ahankara pramata, the meditator here, dhyata, resolves into dhyaya. People who are watching I think soccer, American American football, or who are watching the cricket in India, or who are watching the Wimbledon, they have this experience of getting absorbed into object of watching. To the extent they don't know what is the time and what is the position of their city. Sometimes person is sitting just on the edge of the chair because it's a last over cricket. This is, you ask me, Swanubhava. Literally, one over, seven runs. If you do it, then you will be world, world champion. World Cup. Ayyo. As if you and that cricketer are not to. Honestly, I am telling you. The cricketer who is batting and myself, subject, object, I am one who is watcher and he is one who is watched. They are not. He plays as though I am playing. Oh, and he, there is no ball. Ah. Next ball, he, he could not take any run. My God, four balls, seven runs. Even though the, the, he is a cricketer, I am the one who is watching the cricket naturally. 
But in my mind, subject-object division has gone. I have totally identified with that. My mind, the watcher's mind, the watcher is resolved into that. Totally identified with that cricketer. That's what? This is called an absorption of the mind. So, so this is absorption of the mind is the capacity of the mind. It's a facility given to the human being. He should utilize this here also. So Nirvikra Swadhi that Vedanta talks about is this Akhanda Karvati, Aham Brahmasmurti, Anuvrutti, without entertaining. Entertain Ahankara, will, effort. Sometimes you don't repeat. I will repeat because this Nirvikra Samadhi is a grey area. Very, very grey area for Vedantins, I am telling you. Most of the people do not know the difference between Nirvikra Samadhi and Nididhyasana based absorption. They don't know. They either criticize Nirvikra Samadhi or that is all yoga. No, 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 no. Please understand it. It's our, our, our samadhi is a result of ultimately shaman manan niridhyasana. Niridhyasana in which you dwell upon the teaching, you replay the teaching based on shaman manan. Clarity also is there. So that is, that is, so you entertain, try to entertain. Will, effort, all, everything is there. Then you automatically get absorbed. That is our nivrikava samadhi. Akhanda karuti. Ambrahmasmi vritti anuvritti continues. Anyway, so how does one know that the vritti or thought is present in Nirvikalpa Samadhi? Vidyarnya says that the situation in Nirvikalpa Samadhi is similar to the deep sleep condition. After waking up from, from the sleep, one says that he did not experience anything in sleep. That's enough. That's a recollection. Recollection is based on experience. Experience, no experience is possible without vritti, thought. No experience. Try, give me one experience without thought. Just enumerate one experience without thought. If you have experience, definitely it is in the form of a vritti only. That only will be recollected, right? So basically, after waking up from the sleep, well, one says that he did not experience anything in sleep. For that, from that statement, well, experience of absence of everything, right, must be registered in the mind, in the sleep. In the mind, it is registered in what form? In the form of thought. So, which is a sukshma vritti, we call avidya vritti. We call because the mind has resolved. Anything resolves into its karana. Therefore, there is a, we know also that a whole thing becomes blank. Whole thing is nothing but ignorance in the deep sleep. So, it's Agnana Mukti, Karana Shalirvati, that we call. We discussed this in the first chapter of Panchadeshi. Sukshma Vritti. It's very different from your sthula vritti in a conscious, of a conscious mind. So anyway, that is why one is able to recollect the experience of the non-experience upon waking up. So that recollection is the proof of presence of vritti or a thought in a sleep. Similarly, the rec recollection that I am Brahman, vritti, after one comes out of the samadhi, proves the presence of a ham brahmasmi vritti in a nirvikalpika samadhi, where at the time you are not aware. If you are aware, then well, subject of the division. Oh, I am aware that I am Brahman. That thought, oh, I am able to retain that thought. Oh, oh, oh I am Brahman. Then division, pramata, prama, dhyata, dhye, etc. Division is there. That is not nevrikalpa. Even that awareness goes away. So, basically, that is how we say subject of the division resolves. Subject of the division resolves means subject resolves into object object of meditation. That is here, Sakshi, I mean, I am Sakshi, etc. You are not aware that my your mind is entertaining this thought right now. 
So vritti that after comes out of samadhi also proves the presence of a vritti in a nirvikalpa samadhi. So continuation of this thought flow in nirvikalpa samadhi is not known at the time of samadhi. But it is well definitely inferred from the recollection. Once you come out of the samadhi, like the way you recollect it after waking up, that you did not experience anything. There was an absence of everything. You did not experience anything. Means you experienced the absence of everything in the deep sleep state. But you are not aware at that time. Once you get up, you become conscious, then you are aware. Same way from in samadhi, you are not aware that oh, my mind is entertaining, you know, retaining this thought. Oh, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am Brahman. No. Entertainment, Savikalpa Samadhi. But after entertaining for some time, mind absorbs into that object of meditation. Oh, yes, Sakshi, I am Brahman, I am, I am Sakshi, etc. Well, that is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. But once you come out of the Samadhi, well, in a conscious mind again, you, you, you definitely say that you have, you experience that you are Brahman etc. Thus the thoughts are present in subtle form in Nirvikal Samadhi. That's what Vidyarana says. Nirvikal Samadhi also has a thought. Example he gives is a deep sleep state. Where which is called Nirvikal <laughs> subject of the division is not there. Yet Prati is there. Sukshma. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om